When you sing, you take a breath, you suspend for a minute, and then the tone begins. It's kind of like lighting a match. You strike the match, that's the breath in. There's a moment of suspension, and then the flame kind of magically appears, which is like what happens when you begin to sing. And each onset is like a magic trick because there are so many muscles and so many physical things happening to make that tone appear in the air that it seems almost like a flame appearing. For me, the spark began with Ella Fitzgerald. When I was a little kid, I loved listening to her. I think it was the freedom she sang with and the feeling of improvisation. And some people hate it when you say that Baroque music is like jazz, but there are ways in which you have a kind of freedom to ornament, a freedom to play fitting into the meter in different ways. I love thinking about those elements, trying to make it feel spontaneous, to feel free, to feel varied, and to express all different kinds of human emotions. What's so exciting about Handel as an example of this kind of communication is that he gives us very few words in any given aria. And some people think, well, that's not verismo, that's not truth, that's not telling stories. But actually, it's incredibly human. Then second time is, first time is straight through, not a big deal, but the second time is a big pause. Okay. And he has an eighth pickup. As a human being, we don't often think with a lot of different words. We have this undercurrent of emotion, and that infuses everything we do. And you go, and then I'm going to go, and so with the phrasing in an aria by Handel, with the dynamics, with the ornaments, you can create all of these different feelings and the feelings are pure. Um, and even though you're speaking them through the words and through the music, they have a different kind of resonance. <laughs> This aria, Quella Fiamma, is only a couple lines of text, and they're really fun. It says, This flame that burns in my chest is augmented by the blood that pumps into my heart. And then in the second section, in the B section, it says, How pure is the flame and how great is the tinder for the fire, not tinder the app, but tinder for the fire that makes it burn even brighter. When I'm performing it, there's all of these fast notes that we call coloratura. <laughs> so I think of that as the flame. When I'm thinking about a technique to make those fast notes happen, to sort of lock them into my voice, we'll think about H's, adding H's between every note. So you could go, which should make, in theory, it move. But then if I take away the H's, but keep the feeling of them, it should go, I would not blow out the flame and therefore not waste all of my air and be able to get through a long phrase. It's a really fun thing to marry the theme of this piece, Quella Fiamma, and the metaphor that it uses for love, and then a sort of technical thought that helps me execute the expression musically of that flame.
When you walk on stage, you want to be able to tap into a kind of spontaneity. What's so incredible about working with some of the best musicians in a smaller number is that we can all respond to each other and our emotions and our intentions can play off one another. Working with James Austin Smith has been a revelation. There's something about his sound on the oboe and my particular sound as a countertenor that we can make fit together in interesting ways. In Quella Fiamma, what we're trying to do is find an interplay with our ornamentation and how we express our different sounds over the course of a phrase. What we wind up doing is mirroring each other's sound worlds and adjusting our voice. It's such an exciting way to express the idea of a flame, of a flickering, with the voice and with the oboe. As a performer, I approach opera and chamber music in exactly the same way. I want to bring the same level of drama that I would on an opera stage to any concert, to any, any context, because I think that's what makes the music speak. The difference with chamber music is in the process of creating the sound. What I love about it is we, as a group, have to be painters together. We have to paint the set, we have to sew the costumes, but we have to do it all with the way that we're constructing the music. And that's what's really exciting about it. The Chamber Music Society thanks you for your support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your support.